And welcome everyone. I'm really glad that you joined us this morning. Um, I, I told a few people this morning, I, I've stopped watching the news. I just go to all the commencements and graduation ceremonies and bask in the glow of all this young, intelligent, eager, smart people who uh, are committed and going to change the world. So my, my advice to you is to do similar things. Just go to commencements all the time. It makes you feel good. Well, we're here this morning actually to celebrate, so that's the good news. Um, since these aren't the most positive times, I thought that you would all enjoy something positive. And um, you're here because you have a bond with UCSF. And I have a bond with UCSF myself, having trained at UCSF. But most people have a bond with UCSF because their child was born at UCSF. Their spouse, their child had help when they had cancer, fought with Alzheimer's, something that was difficult for them, and they interacted with our medical center. Or maybe their son or daughter attended one of our schools. But today we're going to talk about the business side of UCSF, um, something that is really important, particularly in these times. And I have lots of data, and there's lots of facts and figures, so I want to give you um, one piece of information that I think is most memorable. Eight years ago, UCSF had a $1.8 billion impact on the Bay Area, $1.8 billion. Today, that impact is valued at $6.2 billion, $6.2 billion, and that represents 39,000 jobs in the Bay Area. So that means UCSF is generating three times the purchasing power and wages for the region than it did during the dot-com boom. Really impressive. And I would submit that we need that now more than we've ever needed it. So let me go through some of the data uh, with you this morning. So here's the revenue slide. To start out, as, as Mr. Rosenberg just said, UCSF is a $3.3 billion organization. So where does that money come from? The darkest green section shows that a little over half our revenue, $1.8 billion, comes from the UCSF Medical Center, and nearly half of the remainder comes from federal grants. That's mainly funding from the NIH, the National Institutes of Health, for our research. And last year, more than $340 million, the lightest green segment, came from generous private donors or foundations who believed in UCSF and wanted to be part of our mission. Now, I want you to notice that the small teal silver, which represents 6.8% of our budget, that's $225 million, and that's our share of state educational appropriations. So that's the small uh, silver. So what about expenses? Operating expenses are shown on this slide, so that you just saw what the state gives us. And let me tell you that what the state gets for its investment UCSF spends $496 million per year on instruction and academic support combined, which is represented by the dark orange section. And most of that education takes place in the laboratories and the medical center and are supported by these other expenses. That's a pretty good return on investment for our state. But that's only the start. So let's talk about people. And I mentioned how important jobs are today, um, particularly in our state. So we spend this money on people, students, patients, faculty, researchers, and staff. UCSF employs nearly 22,000 people, enough for us to be considered in this area as an industry all our own. Nearly 21,000 of those jobs are right here in San Francisco. So let me help you put that into perspective. Uh, San Francisco is known as a financial hub. It's the birthplace of venture capital and home to Wells Fargo and Charles Schwab. But the entire finance and insurance industry makes up 6% of the city employees. The entire finance and insurance industry is 6%. UCSF represents 5.6% of all the employees. And UCSF jobs are good, solid jobs in growing industries. They span the full range of skill levels and education, and most of those jobs come with benefits. In a state that has 12.6% unemployment today, that's good news. So this slide is a little hard to see, but, but focus on that dark blue bar. That's us at UCSF. And the light blue bar to the left of that is the city and county of San Francisco. So 
People ask me what surprised me most about being chancellor at UCSF, and it really is the scope of our impact on the city of San Francisco. This slide, even though I trained at UCSF and was a longtime neighbor to UCSF, I had no idea how vast UCSF is. We're now the second largest employer in the city and the fifth largest employer in the region. That means UCSF dwarfs some of the companies we think of as industry leaders here. UCSF has more employees in the Bay Area than Safeway, Wells Fargo, PG&E, The Gap, or Charles Schwab. Now here's a Google map for everyone. It's a little hard to see, but we're also all over the city. UCSF is located in 20 sites in the city, and 16 are shown on this slide, 16 of our largest sites. We have three main campuses at Parnassus, Mount Zion, and here at Mission Bay. It's hard to get much further apart than the VA out at Land's End and where we are today in Mission Bay. That, that's you, Paul, up there on the, <laughs> by the ocean. So when we talk about economic impact, we're talking about our staff and students buying groceries and coffee, actually lots of coffee. I'm personally contributing to that. Supporting schools, paying rents in every neighborhood in this city. And here's the economic engine that is UCSF. So how do we get, how do we make that math work? How do we get to $6.2 billion? When economic analysts look at an organization, they use standard models to calculate how much the organization generates beyond its own payroll. So they start with our $3.3 billion in revenue and our total faculty and staff, as well as our retirees who get UCSF pensions. These payments represent our direct impact. <coughs> then they look at UCSF purchases of goods and services, such as the $180 million we spend each year on construction. UCSF construction alone creates an estimated 1,600 jobs each year in the Bay Area. But each of these groups, as well as our students, spends money on living expenses, which support jobs in corner markets, retail stores throughout the area. These are our induced impacts. Altogether, these direct and induced impacts represent $6.2 billion for the Bay Area and that 39,000 jobs I spoke about earlier. In San Francisco itself, that's a $4.7 billion impact with 32,000 jobs. So half of our budget is for the medical center. Why would a hospital have an impact beyond the direct money it spends? Well, let me explain something about our patients. With the internet and with referrals, more and more patients are looking for the best health care. That's particularly true when they have a life-threatening condition. So if they have a brain tumor or breast cancer, prostate cancer, or whether their loved one might have a serious neurologic disorder, or need a liver transplant. Those searches lead to UCSF. UCSF serves 30,000 inpatients every year, and roughly 65% of our patients come from outside San Francisco. Most bring family members who stay in hotels, take taxis, and eat at restaurants. Our patients had 92,500 visitors last year, and they spent 14,500 nights in hotels. That has an impact. Many people know UCSF research for its Nobel Prize winners, who are shown on this slide. Chancellor Emeritus Mike Bishop and Harold Varmus, who discovered that some normal genes, when altered, can cause cancer. Stan Prusner, who discovered prions, the infectious agents lead, linked to neurodegenerative <laughs> diseases such as mad cow disease. And most recently, Liz Blackburn, who won the Nobel Prize in 2009 for co-discovering the enzyme telomerase and showing how it protects chromosomes. But in fact, those are just the Nobel Prize winners. We're surrounded by research superstars here at UCSF. The truth of great research is nobody works alone. They're surrounded by peers doing equally significant work. 
So let me point out Herb Boyer, who co-created recombinant DNA technology, launching the biotechnology industry. Jay Levy, among the first to identify HIV as the cause of AIDS. Gail Martin, who co-discovered embryonic stem cells. John Clements, who discovered that the lungs of premature infants lack a key protein called surfactant. He went on to create an artificial surfactant that has cut the mortality rate of premature infants in half. These scientists represent the caliber of research at UCSF, and that research attracts 463 million per year in research federal funds, more than any other public institution. So what about the stimulus money, ERA grants? That number is 132.7 million awarded so far for 305 stimulus grants to UCSF. So I told you it's commencement season. It's a great, great time to celebrate the next generation. 57% of our students stay in the Bay Area. And I don't think that it is an overstatement to say that we get the best and the brightest. So one of the metrics for that is to look at how many people apply. How hard is it to get into our schools? And the answer is, it's really tough to be enrolled at UCSF. UCSF has 4,444 students, all at the graduate level, earning MDs, PhDs, and doctorates in dentistry, nursing, and pharmacy. These are the cream of the crop. And all of our schools are in the top five in the nation. Pharmacy and nursing are ranked first nationwide, first and second nationwide for many years in research and peer rankings. So these are the students who come to us having set up clinics in India as undergraduates, who hopped on the first plane to Haiti after the earthquake, but 57% of them stay here after they graduate. So they're not only keeping their wages here, but they're the people who give back to our community. So it's very popular these days, and maybe even a little jargony, to talk about innovation. But innovation is the heart and soul of UCSF. Why does it matter that we have top researchers and top students? It's really, in the end, about the value of innovation, not just to patients and their families, but also this innovation drives new patents and licenses that bring in nearly 64 million each year to UCSF. And more importantly, that attracts the kind of companies the city wants in growing industries. The latest example is Bayer, who just announced that they'll locate right across the street. They're here for the talent pool and for collaborative research. In a few minutes, Richard Scheller from Genentech will tell you more about that. And since this building opened in 2003, 30 bioscience companies have started here in the QB3 garage and incubator network. Three of them are so new they didn't even make it in the report. And most of those are spun out of UC research. But they're launching here because they want to be close to UCSF. So this slide shows you the impact of UCSF on bringing biotech to San Francisco itself. This slide represents San Francisco's share of the region's commercial real estate occupied by biotech companies. So, so look at 2003. That's the year this building opened and Mission Bay began. So although the numbers are still relatively small, they are inarguably growing, and I do think that's related to UCSF coming to Mission Bay, up to now 6.1% in 2009. This innovation and these small companies are important, but what's really exciting is if you look at the ripple effect, the spin-offs from being in such a, an entrepreneurial area, this is just a quick look at two examples of early spin-offs from UCSF and their impact 25 years later, Genentech and Chiron. At least 33 companies have spun out of Genentech, including CB Therapeutics, IDEC, Toleric, Millennium, and Sujin. These are major players, some of which already have thousands of employees and multi-billion dollar revenues. And similar numbers have spun out from Cetus and Chiron. Cell Therapeutics, Onyx, Cosan, Supergen, and partners at Kleiner Perkins. 
So this economic report is a look backwards. But right now, the world of biomedical research is in one of those great moments where everything seems to be changing so rapidly, as if we're in the Industrial Revolution, where medicine, as we know it, is going to change. So if you look around here at UCSF and UC Excitement, uh, it's, it's excitement for a good reason. In the next year, the Cardiovascular Research Building will, will open here in Mission Bay. And where you see the cranes, that's the neuro, new neurosciences building where we just broke ground across the quad. At Mount Zion, the new Osher Center will open this fall. And at Parnassus, the Stem Cell Research Building will open up next year. Across the street from here this fall, we'll break ground on the new UCSF Medical Center at Mission Bay. That's an important tipping point for Mission Bay. Over the next four years, that construction project will employ more than 1,000 people at its peak. And when it opens, it will employ more than 1,100 doctors, nurses, technicians, and staff. So I hope you can see this picture. On the left there is the year 2000. I, I tell people I used to live on Potrero Hill when I was a fellow, and I would run down here in these abandoned railroad yards. It is truly remarkable. So I think a picture speaks much better than, than I can of the impact that UCSF is having in San Francisco. Eight years ago, Mission Bay was an expanse of bare dirt, and UCSF's economic impact was $1.8 billion. Today, our impact is $6.2 billion, 39,000 jobs in the Bay Area, and creating a magnet for bioscience companies here in San Francisco. So I think that you can look and see 2000, 2010, and the picture of 2020. Just imagine beyond 2020 what this will look like. So thank you for joining all of us to celebrate this, and uh, I look forward to the other speakers. Um, so now I'm going to introduce the first of those speakers, um, and it is a great, great pleasure for me to introduce my former colleague, Richard Scheller, who is Executive Vice President of Research and Early Development at Genentech. In this role, he's responsible for the strategy for Genentech's research, drug discovery, business development, and early development through proof of concept. Richard also serves on Genentech's Research Review Committee and is a member of the Executive Committee and Enlarge Roche Corporate Executive Board. Richard joined Genentech in 2001 after a stellar career at Stanford. And one of the, the things that I just showed you on the slides is the research superstars at UCSF. Well, Richard is a research superstar, and I'm happy this morning to be able to congratulate him and tell you that just on June 3rd, it was announced that Richard was one of the scientists who shared the Kavli Prize for neurosciences, having discovered genes that govern the way nerve cells in the brain communicate. So Richard is a scientist, a great leader of science, and was formerly a great colleague of mine. So I'm looking forward to Richard's comments this morning. Richard? Thank you very much, Sue. It's a pleasure to be here and see some, see some old friends and meet some new folks. Uh, it's a pleasure to represent another of the Bay Area's uh, large employees. Our campus in South San Francisco is uh, home to uh, 11,000 employees. As Sue said, I'm Executive Vice President of Research and Early Development, and outside of my office at Genentech, I have uh, several photos of the Chancellor, uh, and unfortunately myself, dressed up uh, for Halloween. I have photos of Sue as Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz, and Eminem, Princess Leah, whatever that is, um, Alice in Wonderland, and Snow White, and so on. And these are available on request at, <laughs> at gene.com. Uh, on a more serious note, uh, Sue's coming here to UCSF is actually just the latest example of a very rich set of relationships that exist between our institutions. As Sue mentioned, as, and as I'm sure you know, Genentech was co-founded by a UCSF biochemistry professor, Herb Boyer, and the Bay Area location was, I'm sure, part of the reason for the success of Genentech, and it's no accident that the largest and most vibrant hub of biomedical research in the world is present here and grew up here. 
Well, Genentech was the first biotech company. Hundreds more have come since, as Sue mentioned, and many were founded by Bay Area University faculty, and many derived their rich talent from UCSF and other Bay Area universities. There's, of course, no monopoly on scientific excellence and innovation, so at Genentech, we're always look, looking out for opportunities to collaborate. Um, we have many collaborations with UCSF, and these take many forms. Some are purely philanthropic. We fund scholarships for graduate students here in Genentech Hall, a fellowship in the cancer biology program. We have ongoing projects in various clinical development areas, providing millions of dollars a year to UCSF. And to date, we've entered into more than 15 formal research collaborations in cancer and other therapeutic areas. We also have a very novel and I believe really groundbreaking blanket agreement for research collaborations that was actually really put forward here by Reg Kelly, who I think had to leave, I'm not sure if he's still here, uh, that allows scientists to collaborate extremely easily rather than having to go through a long, drawn out legal process whereby Usually the scientists are so frustrated with the process that they forget what the collaboration was going to be about before the, by the time the lawyers are finished. We've basically eliminated that and have an agreement whereby scientists can, can interact quite freely. And as I said, I think this is, this is really a, a groundbreaking way for universities and companies to collaborate. We're particularly excited about a recently announced collaboration with the UCSF Small Molecule Drug Discovery Center to discover and develop drug candidates for Alzheimer's disease and other neurodegenerative diseases. And this is not just a license or an early research agreement of some kind. This is a true collaboration between UCSF and Genentech scientists and we hope to really just cast aside typical industry academia boundaries and really work together to come up with new drug candidates and medicines that really make a difference. So while our business models differ between UCSF and Genentech, we have common goals in education. We have 120 postdocs at Genentech in doing great science and in helping patients. We're really after breakthrough medicines that will have a real impact on the lives of patients with serious diseases and that will rewrite the medical textbooks. So thanks again for having me here. Thanks again for being such a terrific collaborative partner. And congratulations to UCSF for being the powerhouse of innovation for patients and being such an important Bay Area, uh, so important to the Bay Area community. Thank you. Thank you very much, Richard. And for anyone who does email Richard uh, for embarrassing pictures of me, just copy me because uh, there is such a thing as payback, and I have a lot of material. <laughs> so, thank you for that, Richard. The, the, uh, I'm now really happy to tell you that, that uh, Ted Egan has joined us this morning. Uh, UCSF could not have grown to what we are today without a true collaboration with the city and county of San Francisco. The city's been instrumental in helping guide the development of Mission Bay over the last decade, both as a UCSF campus and as a new economic zone. And as you've seen, UCSF is committed to contributing back to the city where we live. It's my pleasure to introduce Ted Egan, who's chief economist in the controller's office in the city and county of San Francisco. Welcome. Uh, thank you and good morning. Um, during this presentation that you're going to hear a lot, you've already begun to hear uh, a lot about the numbers around the economic impact that UCSF has on the city and on the broader Bay Area economy. I'd like to just say a few words from the city's perspective about how we think UCSF changes the game for the evolution of the San Francisco economy. What it means to have UCSF here from the perspective of the economic development and the future of, of, of the entire city's economy. Many people may not be aware of this, but there were actually more jobs located in San Francisco in 1989 than there were in 2009. 
We have not been a city that has generated uh, a lot of jobs, and yet we're in the middle of a region, the Bay Area region, which is one of the most dynamic economic regions in the world. Um, San Francisco uh, was, of course, founded as a port center and a manufacturing center, and that was a large measure of our prosperity for about 100 years. Uh, beginning around the middle of the last century, we began to develop our downtown and became a corporate headquarters center, and that really guaranteed a lot of prosperity and stability to the city's economy through the 1980s. Um, but as the large employers in San Francisco have begun to stagnate uh, in terms of their jobs uh, and begun to move outside of the city, we've searched for a new economic engine for San Francisco. We've had tourism, that's been a source of strength for us, but we've needed to diversify our economy. And then when you look around the Bay Area, this sort of striking contrast between the job situation in San Francisco and the rest of the area, particularly south of San Francisco, uh, you're, you're struck by the dominant role of technology uh, and of high technology industry in accounting for the growth in that area. It's made all the sense in the world, I think, from the city's point of view to try and um, bring some of that innovative high technology employment uh, to San Francisco. And what are the assets that we really have to work on that? We don't have a large electronics research capacity. We're not traditionally uh, uh, have the same kinds of assets that Silicon Valley and South Bay has. Uh, but one thing that we do have that we have the capacity to build on is UCSF. Uh, as you've already heard, the Bay Area is the world's largest biotechnology cluster, and the biotechnology industry was founded here. Many startups have come out of UCSF and other Bay Area universities for many years. Uh, but until the past few years, those startups have not been founded within the city of San Francisco. Uh, you saw the slide earlier that indicated we had a very small share of the Bay Area's biotech industry until very recently. It's been the growth of UCSF over the past decade and the growth of this campus at Mission Bay that has allowed the city to begin to diversify its economy into new areas, into biotechnology, and into similar and related high technology industries. That give us the capacity to begin to regenerate the entire city's economy uh, in new ways. Uh, this is already paying big dividends for the city. Uh, the growth in life sciences employment that I believe is, is really attributed to the fact that UCSF is in the city is generating over $8 million a year in payroll taxes for the city. Uh, there are jobs for San Francisco residents and career-based jobs in growing industries that we did not have in the past. Uh, so in terms of growing our overall job base, improving the fiscal situation for the city, and improving the choice of jobs uh, that inspire young people in San Francisco to invest in education and to consider staying in the city for their career. Uh, the growth of life sciences and biotechnology industry in San Francisco has really opened up uh, our economy in, in lots of new ways, and it's this campus uh, and this university that's allowed that to happen. Um, so with those comments, I'd be interested in seeing the rest of the presentation as well.